and welcome to Ensai Mental. I'm Jason Carter, and as we navigate the uncharted waters of this new pandemic, it's important that we remember a priceless natural resource that is still today one of the best antiviral options available. Simply put, iodine is the most effective agent for killing viruses, and this is especially true of influenza viruses. This is one of the primary painful lessons learned after the 1918 influenza pandemic that killed more than 30 million people in a single year. In the 25 years following that pandemic, governments across the world researched the pandemic's causes, and the effectiveness of iodine was one of their greatest findings. They found that iodine used in aerosol form, as in a sprayed mist, was equally successful for killing viruses. While we all know by now that the current methods of dealing with an influenza outbreak include isolation, hand washing, and antiviral drugs, all of these could be improved by including iodine. Iodine is the most effective, broad-spectrum antiseptic with low toxicity. Iodine has an extremely high germicidal activity, and to date, no organism has yet been found to develop a resistance to iodine. Iodine has been used in various forms as an antiseptic for the skin, wounds, and also to sterilize the air. And in this way, iodine is known to kill bacteria, viruses, fungi, and protozoa. In its long history of use, iodine has been used successfully against influenza, herpes, and even smallpox. Iodine has been regarded as a universal antiseptic for more than 150 years, and it only produces side effects with high doses, like when taken in grams instead of milligrams. Once in the bloodstream, iodine is deposited in many areas, including the thyroid most prevalently, but also the salivary glands, nasal secretions, stomach, and lungs. It is the iodine in these particular tissues that is especially effective against bacteria and viruses. So how does iodine protect the upper respiratory system? The salivary glands, nasal mucosa, and lungs all secrete mucus which contains iodine. Stomach mucosa captures iodine from the blood and secretes it into the stomach cavities where it kills bacteria and viruses and neutralizes a vast array of chemical and biological toxins. So how much iodine should you take? The current recommended daily dose of iodine, at least in the U.S., is 150 to 200 micrograms daily, as this relatively low dose has been proven effective at avoiding goiters. If your daily iodine dose is over 3 milligrams daily for two weeks, the thyroid is then saturated with iodine and no longer absorbs much iodine after that. At this point, ingested iodine enters all those other critical body areas I just mentioned, and in this way, one classic theory about how iodine protects the respiratory system is that airborne viruses likely become stuck in mucus and are then killed by the iodine in that mucus. While there is iodine in table salt, of course, it's far less than the amount we need to protect our respiratory system. Seaweed and kelp are two of the richest food sources of iodine, and these you can, of course, eat every day. But if you want to begin taking iodine internally as a liquid, start with around 150 to 200 micrograms, which again is that recommended daily dose. And it's a pretty small dose, but from there you can step it up gradually if you feel a larger dose is necessary for you. Please be careful and take note of how you feel. Because iodine is so cleansing, it's very common to get a headache when you first start taking iodine internally. This is actually a healing response as the iodine is eradicating all of the countless toxins that we ingest every day that occupy your iodine receptor sites like someone sitting in your chair. So try a small amount of iodine every day and if you wear a respirator mask, spray some iodine into the mask before wearing it to increase the mask's protective capabilities. To be fair, because research on iodine was conducted after the 1918 pandemic, there are no actual attempted methods of using iodine during a pandemic. However, used cautiously, consciously, and properly, this miracle mineral, fatuously forgotten and ignored for far too long, should be something you should consider for supporting a dynamic immune system. And also, iodine is extremely cheap. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.